Yay, we're live. Hey, everyone. Good morning. Happy Saturday. Oh, got to turn my phone off. Make sure you're not having to listen to the buzzing and chiming and everything. Um, so I am getting ready for my last day of the of like my official days of my holiday open house. And I thought I would try this cozy fall look. Um, and I thought, you know what, why not do it where y'all can see, because it seems like you enjoy being able to see, you know, how I get ready and how I use the different products. I already have my foundation primer on. And so I'm putting a little bit of concealer. My skin is still clearing up from that like big breakout that I had. And my mom and I both think it is from that massage oil she used. So here's what we decided. Here's a little trick. If you break out from the massage oil that, um, your masseuse uses or your massage therapist, whatever is the right thing to call them now. Um, we are going to start using our naturally oil that is for the face. It's amazing. It's so luxurious. It smells incredible. And, um, and so that is our solution. So she'll use the regular like lotions and oils that she does on our body but we are going to switch over to that and see if that helps because both of us were getting breakouts like along our hairline and I do get breakouts anyway, but I had like massive breakout this last couple of weeks that my skin is still recovering from. And it just happened, you know, right after I got a massage with her, her gal. And it's somebody that I don't usually go to, but my sweet mama paid for me to come over to her house because she gets her lady to come over I think every week or every other week. And so she get, uh, gifted me a massage, which was so amazing. So I'm just doing my concealer to cover up blemishes. Feel free to comment. Um, I use StreamYard so that I'm able to also record these into, into um, YouTube videos for my YouTube channel at the same time. And so... I'm not able to see your comments unless you do. There's like a link that says if you want to be able to comment, like give approval. And then I actually can see it on my computer screen. Otherwise, I can just come back and answer any questions that you have and see your different comments after I'm finished so that I'm not too distracted. Um, so I'm doing my beige 210 matte foundation. I love this because it gives just a nice matte finish and absorbs oil and it has anti-aging benefits. It has our 3D patented anti-aging in it and it lasts. So it just gives a really good airbrushed finish. I can layer it if I, um, if I want to. You can just do a tiny bit of foundation and it basically is like putting just one sheer layer of powder on. Um, so it goes on like a liquid and then dries like a powder. We also have our luminous foundation, which is awesome. I love the look and feel of it. I'm just so oily that um, I just kind of, I just need the matte. But if you have drier skin, the luminous foundation is awesome. It just gives you that really healthy, dewy look. It moisturizes your skin all day. Um, so you might want to try that out. And I'm curious to know if y'all would be interested in a video on how to find the right foundation for you, because there is kind of a skill to being able to look. I've done this for so long. I can actually look at someone's face and look at the foundation, even if it's not a Mary Kay brand. And I can pretty much tell which one, you know, between one or two, which one would be the best. And so in Mary Kay, when you do your private consultation with your Mary Kay consultant, it's great because you get to actually do a stripe test um, and get that perfect match without going home with a bunch of foundations that are not the right shade. But I was thinking that I could do like a tutorial on just kind of understanding skin tones and kind of figuring out, um, which, you know, how to match, even as your skin changes from season to season, if you get a little bit more tan, a little bit more fair in the winter. Mine, I have a pretty broad range. Um, if I don't get any sun, you know, for months, I can be, you know, 
somewhat fair. I still have a little bit of color. I go down to like a dark, dark ivory or a very light beige. Um, but I can get really dark. And so honestly, from, you know, from one like end of the spectrum to the other, I, um, I could use four or five foundations, but typically I have two or three that I'm able, I really, I could, what I could do is get the beige 200 and the beige 220. 200 is mostly the lightest that I get. If I get lighter than that, if that starts looking too dark, it's like, okay, I got to go out and get some sunshine. Um, and then I do get a little bit darker than the 220, but not usually because I wear sunscreen every day. My face doesn't get, it, I, I don't get nearly as dark as I used to when I didn't wear sunscreen. But if that starts to look a little bit too light, I can usually um, just using my bronzer, I can make it work really well. So if you can just get like your lightest shade and your darkest shade and then mix them all year long, that's a great thing to um, kind of minimize the amount of stuff that you need, the amount of shades. So I just did some concealer and I did go ahead and do a little bit of eye primer. And now I'm going to do this really fun, cozy fall eye look that I saw a picture of. So I posted it. If you didn't see it, you can just look, look down on the feed because it's there. Um, candlelight, frozen iris, hazelnut, and Merlot. I love these colors. So I'm going to do just a little bit of candlelight first. It's one of those colors that I wear, like this is my everyday compact and this is candlelight. I've already gotten a new one kind of recently because I use this color almost every day. And I'm just gonna put a little bit underneath the arch of my eyebrow here. And a little bit in the corner here. And these Chroma Fusion eyeshadows, hopefully you can hear me. I know my microphone is very moody when I cover my face. So um, these Chroma Fusion are very layerable. So you can get a really sheer application or you can go very dramatic. Hazelnut is also part of my everyday color. I use this as my mid-tone a lot. So I'm gonna do that up here. And I'm basically going right above the crease all the way, like kind of like a windshield wiper motion for my mid-tone. And this is the blending brush. I absolutely love this brush. I use it every day. It comes, it's an a la carte brush. So you can get it by itself and add it. It does not come, it's kind of a newer addition. And so it does not come in our glamour, um, brush collection but there's room in the in the little case that it comes in to add it it'll still fit in there so you can get this brush separately the crease brush the smudge brush and the placement brush come so basically you've got a placement brush a crease brush and a smudge brush all right, so I'm going to use the crease brush for, actually, you know, at first I'm going to use the placement brush and I'm going to get, all right, I'm going to use the placement brush and I'm going to get a little bit of the frozen iris. So this is my big compact. This is, here's my frozen iris. And I'm going to do that in, let me get my little mirror here, in the, um, the middle of my lower lid. And I'm just blending it um, in kind of over the top of the candlelight right there. This is just a really pretty shimmery purple. And again, I'm doing a couple of layers just to get, make it a little bit more bold, but you can just do one layer. It just depends on how much pigmentation you want. And then I'm gonna use the crease brush for the Sweet Plum, which I do, I, I like this color. I do wear it a lot. Um, I love, because I have green eyes, I like wearing purples and plums. And this is such a fun color for the fall. 
Um, but you definitely can wear these colors year round. I do. I wear these colors all the time. And I haven't actually figured out what I'm going to wear yet. So uh, this does work with almost everything in my closet. You don't, your makeup does not have to match your outfit. You just want it to complement. You don't want it to go against your outfit. So like I would not wear a bright orange shirt um, with purple eyeshadow, but you can wear just about anything with these colors. So with the plum, because it's that darker shade, I'm doing the corner here up and I'm just following the line from the corner of my eye to the edge of my eyebrow. And then I'm going above. And the reason that I'm going above the crease is for a couple of reasons. One is it opens up my eye. So I don't wanna go too low because that makes my eye look smaller. It also helps because as I get older, my lids, you know, our lids start to kind of move down a little bit. And so I like to use a mat and I like to place this. OK, I need to look up so that I can make sure I'm doing this. And I know you guys hear me say this all the time. I, You know, we're not most of us are not really symmetrical. So sometimes using your eye color is how you can kind of cheat, use your face as your palette and kind of cheat the color so that when you're, it actually helps make your eyes look more even, more symmetrical. And then I'm using that blending brush again to just blend it. So you don't really see where one color starts and the other one stops. And that is how you can wear a bold eye without looking like a clown. Who was that lady? Remember the lady? Um, oh gosh, that was, oh shoot. That had like the crazy blue eyeshadow and the, funny like the blonde wig she was in that tv show with the comedian oh i can't think of it if y'all if y'all know what i'm talking about if you're a mind reader and you know what i'm talking about um post it in here oh it was that it was just a funny sitcom about a guy who was actually a stand-up comedian for, um you know i don't I haven't seen him around recently um and he had like a neighbor or somebody that worked with him or something like that. And she was just this kind of wild and crazy kind of over the top lady. And she had such crazy eyeshadow. I'll have to find a picture of it right now. I'm looking for my steely eyeliner and I'm not finding it. Hold on. There it is. Okay. I love how our new eyeliners have and our lip liners. They all have the color on the bottom. So see that steely, this one's black, so you don't see it as much. We have like brown and blue. So it, it makes it a lot easier to find in our bag. So I love that. Um, so I'm gonna use the steely just to see how that goes. All right. And I'm just going to go right along the lash line. Nothing too thick unless I mess up. Sometimes I mess up and it's like, okay, I guess we're going thick today. All right. And this just helps your lashes to look a little bit fuller and to define the eye. And these eyeliners are waterproof, so they stay all day. And then I'm going to take my smudge brush. And I'm going to get some of that. You know, I'm going to do the iris. I was going to do the sweet plum, but I'm going to go with that frozen iris. And I'm just going to go along the line here just to bring that purple. shimmer underneath. Oh, got it in my eye. All right. Okay. And then I'm going to do my lashes. Um, so I'm going to show you. So here is a compact. This is not the exact same look, but this is our little petite palette. 
Let me open it. I'm trying to be careful. All right, so you can put whatever four eyeshadows you want in there. Um, and then we also have, I wanted to show you how you can, we have our perfect palette. So here it is with three eye colors, a cheek color, and the applicators. And then I made another one. This is how I do my everyday, where it's got the three eyeshadows, the cheek color, the highlight, and the contour. So that's my everyday compact that has what I need um, from just quick out the door look to like a full full look and um i don't know if you guys saw this i put a post i think it was in my story so you may have not seen it but we're supposed to get a new mascara every two to three months and i just you know run into my office and grab a mascara when i need one and then i'm really bad about remembering how long i've had it and it is designed to last much longer i have okay random side note i have one eyelash that is like just it's long and it's not going the right way. I probably should have just used my lash curler or something to get it in place. But anyway, I'm just going to pretend like that's not there. Um, so I always forget about my mascara and it's, it's so simple and I don't know why I've never done it before, but finally what I did is I actually wrote in a Sharpie the date that I grabbed it. I grabbed it on the 7th, November 7th. So I was like, this is so simple. Just write down the date that I grab it. And then I will always know how long I've had it. So does anyone already do that? It's so simple. Why did I not think of doing this before? And um, you can be a part of my mascara club. Or if you are watching this on our um, empowered VIP group, reach out to your consultant and ask her about her mascara club. Because what um what I offer is buy three mascaras, get your fourth free. So that should last you the year and you can get all of them at the same time. And then you just pull them from your shelf. Cause when you, when they're not opened, they have a shelf life of like two or three years. Um, or you can buy four and get an eye makeup remover for free. So the choice is yours. Okay, so this is a new Lash Love Mascara. Doing that. And I'm gonna do a little bit of under eye corrector because I can see the bags under my eyes. And the under eye corrector is not the same as a concealer. So a concealer covers up. So that's why I used it for like blemishes and things. Weird. Oh, here it's right here. Okay. Um, what the under eye corrector does is it actually lifts and highlights. So you don't want to put it on the poofy, baggy part of the eye. You want to put it on the dark, shadowy part. So I really like using my concealer brush so that I have more control. Because if I do it with my finger, which I do sometimes, but when I'm in a hurry or I'm in the car, but um, because y'all know I do my makeup like in the car all the time. Um, not while I'm driving, don't worry. But the concealer brush makes it so much easier. And then I just do it right under here. And I do a, li a line from the corner of my eye to my eyebrow. And that gives just a little facelift right there. And then anywhere else that you want to highlight. So you can do like here, here. Anything else that you want to just kind of lift and brighten, you can do. Okay. So, and then there's the line from the corner of the eye. See how it cleans that up and just gives it an like an automatic lift and shaping. And then you can even do, if you like to do, you know, some good contouring, you could do a concealer that's a, a lighter shade. I already lost it again. Oh, or you can even do the um, the under eye corrector. Right there, like that. You could do it between the eyes right here. Anywhere that you want to 
brighten or highlight. I've seen people do it on their brows. I haven't done my brows yet. So I'm not going to do it there yet. But um, that's a great place if you do like if you cut your brows, like not literally cut, but if you are if you shape them and you do that, the under eye corrector is a great thing that you can use and it lifts the brow. But you do want to be careful if you have kind of a um, strong brow. I don't know what they call that, but if you have like where your the the muscle and tissue under the brow is kind of you might want not want to do it because it'll it could instead of lifting it could make it look more like this. So depends on your eye shape. We all have to just kind of play with things and figure out what is the best for us. And then cheeks. Oh, I grabbed my I grabbed my cheek palette so you can see we have a lot of different cheek color options. Some of them are for ivory skin, some are for beige skin, and some are for bronze skin. So if you see some colors and you're like, oh my gosh, I would never wear that. Well, that's that's probably good. That's probably not the right color for your skin tone. Um, this look recommends Desert Rose. So I'm going to try that. But before I do the Desert Rose, I am going to do some highlight and contour. And I just take, I love this cheek color brush. And I just go like this. Okay. And so I've got the contour on the lower part of my cheekbone and the highlight on the top part of my cheekbone. Like that. Let's see, what time is it? Oh, good. Okay. And of course, I do this a lot faster when I am not <laughs> on camera. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So don't feel like you have to take a long time. You can do your makeup very quickly. And with those colors, keep in mind too, you can just, you can have all four colors, but that doesn't mean you have to use all four every day. I have a lot of eyeshadows. I don't use all of them at the same time. And sometimes I use um, just a couple for a quick natural look. And then sometimes, you know, I do three or four for a more dramatic look. All right. So I'm going to do the rosy nude. This is a very soft color that will work for ivory and beige skin tone. If you have a darker skin tone, um, you might want to do something like um, bear, like our berries. Just depends. But I would, I would probably stick with a, a cooler color, you know, a berry or a rosy or a mauve, not something like coral. I wouldn't do a bright coral cheek with these eye colors. All right, and then let me do a little bit of my uh, bronzer and powder before I do my lips. If you're watching the replay, you can fast forward through the parts that don't interest you. That's totally fine. It won't hurt my feelings. All right, so I'm gonna get a little bit of bronzer. And I like to mix the dark bronzer or contour with my regular powder. But it, it just kind of depends, honestly, on how much sun I've had, because I have to tweak it depending on, you know, if I need it to be a little bit darker to make it stand out or if I need it to be a little bit softer so that it's not weird looking. We, we want it to look natural. We don't want it to be something, you know, you don't want people to come up to you and go, wow, I love your contour. <laughs> you know, it's like. We want them to say, wow, you look really beautiful or, oh, your makeup looks so lovely, but not like, I love how you've contoured your nose today. That's not the goal. Okay. And I'm going to do a little bit under here and then I'm going to get my translucent powder. I like to do my translucent powder and set everything before I do um, my brows and lips. Because when I'm, when I do this, I kind of mess my brows kind of, you know, I mess them up. And so um, that's why I've kind of learned the order that I like to do things. I'm like that with everything. Are y'all like that? Like in the shower, I do, I have a certain order that I do everything in the same order every time. Because I've just found like, it's my rhythm. I'm very systematic <laughs> and strategic. TJ and I were even talking yesterday, so his football season is over, and during football season, he 
woke up and had to be at school by 6:45. So he woke up before Luke. We would wake up Luke as I would like as we were leaving to take him to take TJ to school. And then by the time I came back, Luke would be pretty much ready to go and then we would take him to school. And um and so now that he's not playing football, he doesn't have to be to school. He doesn't really actually have to be at school until like 8:45. But he usually goes by like 8:20 to either go to like tutorials or hang out with his friends or he'll have like a junior society or a student council meeting or something. So anyway, um, so the first part of this school year, TJ would get up really early. And so he would help with feeding the dogs and letting them out and doing all of that. So when that stopped happening, Luke would be up before. And so Penny's like going nuts and she wants to eat. And Dax is still in TJ's room. And and then Penny is a little piglet and she will eat everything. And so we had to, so then like Luke would feed them, but then he would have to pick up Dax's food and put it on the table. And then Dax would come out and then he'd be all confused because Penny had already eaten and they grew up together and they have their own little routines. And so they would always eat together. So then he was confused because Penny wasn't eating. And then Penny would be like, but I want that food. And so it was this whole thing. And so, so TJ and I were just talking about how, okay, we've got a shift. You know, it's like every season we have to reevaluate our routines and our rhythms and what's working and what's not working. And it really works better that whoever wakes up second is the one who, um, hey, Wanda, hello. And I say, I see a hello from another one on my computer. It just says Facebook user. If you want me to see your name, you can give approval. Otherwise, I'll see your name when I get over to Facebook. Um, but yeah, so we're like, all right, we got to shift this. We've got to make a little change so that our mornings can run more smoothly. And so sometimes that means the boys have to shift you know, who does which chore and stuff like that, like feeding the dogs. Um, and I have found that is definitely true for me that once something changes, whether it's the boy, when they were babies, it was like the nap schedule, the childcare situation. Um, the, and then it was like the school schedule because as they've gone to different schools and they, you know, they go to school at different times, the sports schedule for sure. Our sports schedule changes every season. And so it's always the time for us to just reevaluate what do we need to shift so that we have some good rhythms and we're still prioritizing the things that are really important to us. Okay, so this look recommends downtown brown, which is a great color. It's very pretty. We have a lot of different shades that you can choose from. You can absolutely customize it just for fun um, for my open house and because I want to um kind of feature our limited edition i'm actually going to use our 60th anniversary lip velvet i love how easily this goes on and it has a sharpener on the bottom too i should have probably sharpened it um i'm going to probably need to sharpen it here soon just to make sure that i can get the line because i don't even need lip liner this is a, like a lip liner and a lipstick in one This is the bright color. There is a softer pink color. But this lasts for, it lasts for like six to eight hours. I mean, I've been without any touch up. I've been blown away. And it goes on really smooth. And then it dries and it's kind it's a matte. It really does feel like velvet when it goes on. I will say that I like for my lips to feel really moisturized. Um, and so I end up letting it kind of set. And then when I can feel that it's dry, I put a little bit of lip gloss on and it, and it lasts forever. I'm going to try something. This is, I haven't done this before. So y'all are going to tell me, this is the must have mauve liquid matte. I'm going to layer it over the top just to kind of tone down the boldness, although I really like this color by itself. This mauve though, it just is gonna bring it down. Or you could even do the nude over the top. I wish my lips were symmetrical. 
but I can kind of fake it. Okay. So see how that just like brought down the boldness a little bit. And this is a liquid matte too. So same thing. Once it kind of dries, it lasts a really, really long time. But what I'll probably end up doing is a little bit of a lip gloss over it. And depending on, you know, you could do a nude, you could do like the rose nude. If you wanted to do a ballerina pink, um, we were at Kathy's Kathy Dehan in, um, Michigan. And I got one of the ladies to try ballerina pink. I won't say any names, but it was so fun because they were like, no, no, no. And I'm like, just give it a, just give it a little try. And then she put it on and she was like, oh my gosh, I really like that. And I think two or three of the ladies all ended up getting it. And I, I have that happen all the time at parties where I get someone to try, try a lip gloss or a lipstick and they're thinking no way. But then when they realize it's because it's sheer, it just gives like that little bit of pop of color without being over the top. And it's so pretty. And it's such a great way to try new things. It's not a tattoo, you know, just try it. And if you don't like it, you wipe it off. It's no big deal. Hey, Sheila. Yay. I love it. So good to see you. Um, so yeah, so, you know, you could put anything over the top of it and make it bolder or turn it, tune it down, or you can make it more sparkly. We have a lot of lip gloss options too. So, okay, y'all, that is the fall, um, Oh, what's it called? Cozy fall, but you can customize it. You can tweak it. You can put it in a compact. It's totally up to you. Thank you for getting ready with me this morning. I am going to go head out to do the get dressed for my open house. Love y'all. Bye-bye. Go out there and make it a very blessed and powerful day.